Everybody knows this statistic, right? The one where WordPress powers the third of the web, which is a wackadoodle statistic. That's like, what? That's, and that's why there's so many people here, because that's so amazing and cool, and WordPress has this big impact on the world. I just, I like to start this talk with a personal feeling that, like, maybe it's because, like, a third of the developers in the world, like, cut their teeth on WordPress. I've talked to, throughout my career, I'm, like, a front-end developer, and I go to conferences, and I have shows, and I've just made my life being and thinking about being a front-end developer, and, like, like so many of them have WordPress experience. It's like almost weird to meet a developer that doesn't have any of these days, like, like industry-wide. I think that's significant too. It's just like a cool thing to think about, like how welcoming this world is and what an impact like on the lives of developers WordPress has. I just think that's cool. And I just count myself among that group. When I got started building websites, it was totally through the WordPress path, and I'm so glad that it was because that's... Uh, has helped my career tremendously. Let's let's spend a while thinking about how to be a front-end developer. That's that's the talk title for sure. Like I said, I've kind of made my life out of that. Co-founder of CodePen, which is like a social playground for playing around with the web. And I have a podcast. We'll get into that. And I've been writing about it uh, for almost 11 years on CSS Tricks. It's really my whole thing. So I've been wanting to do this talk forever. Like, what is a front-end developer? How do, we, how do we think about it? Let's take one little pit stop before we get started. Is that a correct sentence? I work as a front dash end developer. Yes, it is, because front end is a compound adjective. <laughs> And it should have a dash in it. Is that a correct sentence? I work as a front end. No, because it doesn't have a dash, even though it's a compound adjective. There's a right and wrong answer to this. I don't feel it's necessary to correct people, because it's kind of like you can like let people be wrong. That's fine. Like just let it go. But it, like, well, we're gonna say the word like a thousand times in this talk. We might as well be right about it. What about that one? I work on the front end. Yes, yes, it's a noun, not a compound adjective, so it's cool. Is that right? No, because that's not a thing. It's not being used as an adjective there. What if you saw a blog post said that? You could say, that's not a word. Yes, it is. is it a word? Are we like, well, we can appropriate it. That's cool, but if we're going to fight that fight, we got to like decide to do that collectively, and it's a whole process. Uh, okay, so 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 what is a front-end developer? Well, I run a job board, the CodePen job board, and uh, 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 it's kind of focused on that. So people hire for being a front-end developer all the time. There's the Smashing Mag one, the Stack Overflow job board. There's a million front-end jobs posted all the time, huge industry. It's super definitely a job, and super definitely a job title that people have. I'm sure there's a lot of people here that self-identify that way, have front-end developer in there. A job title in some way, so there's no doubt about that. I wanted, I have a million thoughts about what it, like how to think like one and all this, but I wanted to not just have this me being like, bah, 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 this is what a front end developer is, and have it be representative of a lot of different voices and what they think being a front-end developer is. So on my podcast, Shop Talk Show, I've been doing this series about this, well, asking kind of a series of pointed questions, the same questions to different developers to get different perspective on those same questions. So that's me and my friend Dave who run uh, Shop Talk Show. And, and so far we've talked to these developers, Monica, Eric, Sam, Brad, Trent, Mina, Ben, and, uh, and Peggy. And we'll hear from more of them uh, throughout this whole thing. But I wanted to learn, is front end, has it always been a word? Like in the, like the early days of CSS, do, we, do people refer to themselves as front end developers or not? So I kind of asked Eric this question, who probably has the, like, the longest career of the people that we talked to. And he's gonna, we're going to talk a little bit about the Zen Garden. That was a key moment in the history of front end development where there was like this one unchanging HTML file and different web you know, front end developer designers would apply different style sheets to it and do drastically different things to that document. And it was, it was like open people's eyes to what the power of front-end development and specifically CSS could do to a document. While Eric talks here, it's going to show a movie of like the, the new rebooted. So Zen let's Garden. say during the Zen Garden days, did you say, you know what my job is in the world? I'm a front-end developer. Was that, like a, was that a term then or is that newer than that? I feel like it's a little newer than that, at least as a, as a term of widespread currency. It's become more widespread than that since those days. Like at the time, we didn't just talk about, oh, front end versus back end, right? The Zen Garden days were we were still coming out of the era of everyone's a webmaster, which meant you had to be what we would now call a full stack developer. Of course, back then that meant that you understood that there was a CGI bin directory and maybe you could write some Perl. You know, we, we didn't have the, the vast 
But would you would know? Would you even have known what it meant? Would somebody like or, or is it? Yeah, if someone can't. yeah, if someone said you know, are you a front end developer? I would have said yeah, I, that that's me. So it was kind of, and even in the earliest days, front end developers have been a thing. We've had time to let this thing shake out. You know, like it's a uh, uh, it's a term that was meaningful then, at least to some degree, and is and is definitely meaningful now. So it's a thing. They were we're going to call it a developer. I don't know if you knew that, but. <laughs> It just didn't catch on. It was weird. So I think of all the people I talked to, Mina put it the best. Like, what's a front-end developer? It deals with things that you can see, things that are actually in front of you on the screen in a web client. In, a client. And yeah. in my mind, anyone who works on a you know user-facing interface or application, website, whatever, in my mind, that's a front-end developer. Yeah, what you can see, right? What what people use in the browser. Like, if you deal with the client, the thing, the, the, then that that's what makes you a front end developer. It's not specific languages or whatever. It's like you're dealing with uh, people and they use the browser. So, tr so Trent here struggled a little bit with um, what to call himself, but but really underscores the browser. You know, points. I think on my I looked up <laughs> looked at my website, my blog, and I was like, what did I, I forgot? What did I call, call myself? And I think I say something like web designer and a web builder. Um, because I, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm just this like full stack, like the buck stops at my desk and any front end question um, that you have, I will be the per person at Paravel to go to for mm -hmm. that. Um, but like, yeah, like I, I, uh, I live the majority of my time in whether it's design or building or optimization or whatever it is, it's spent in the browser and that's all I think about. That's where I live. So. I love that. Of course it is. It's the browser. That's what really makes us front-end developers is just living our lives in that in that browser context. This this is 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 really where it is. And it's not like that like back-end developers don't have a browser open all day also, but we care about it at like a weirdly deeper level, like across all kinds of different browsers and all that stuff. And like we care about everything, every little scroll and click and DOM event and nugget of anything in the browser we're, we're, we're kind of deeply into. So this is this is us. You know, there's a heck of a lot of them, isn't there? I should have probably removed the edge ones, though, huh? Huh? <laughs> Sick burn. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but of course it's not. It's not just that. You know, it, we we care about the users, but doesn't everybody? Like, if you work at a company, aren't you like? Should you probably like should care about the well? I think that's true to some degree, but Monica puts a kind of a good point on it. I, I think. struggle to phrase it in a way that's like doesn't sound. Um, like the, a back-end person doesn't care about the user or doesn't care about websites because they kind of do too, right? But they're totally allowed not to, right? Like if you are the person who's writing the SQL code for the database, I think you're totally allowed not to care about the user. This is your personal choice because at that point you're like delegating your responsibility. So I, what I'm trying to say is that I think it's totally fine to not want to call yourself a front-end developer too. As much as we do as front-end developers, there is other roles still, you know, of course there is. There's back-end developers, and she's kind of saying that that's a, that's a difference. You could be a great front-end developer who's really focused on what they're doing and kind of like on purpose delegating the responsibility of deep caring about UX to, to another role. And it's not just browsers, and it's not just the people that use those browsers, but of course it's this craziness too that we've been talking about forever, this rainbow of devices that, uh, that represents front-end design. So it's super definitely a job with a job title. It deals with the browser and de the devices that those browsers run on and the people that use those things. That's what a front-end developer is. What do you need to know, though? We haven't talked about skill sets a little bit. We can get into that. There's definitely like this whole set of foundational skills that's fascinating. Like You need to be like super computer proficient to even start thinking about being a front-end developer, which I think is a whole fascinating thing to think about and talk about. Like you have to be good at this whole slew of software and you have to be like a good typist or have some way of entering uh, proficiently characters into a computer. There's all this stuff you need to know to even, even get started at all. And there's this whole slew of soft skills, which is uh, also a wildly fascinating thing. Like you need to write a damn fine email. You need to have good Slack etiquette, Slack etiquette. And you need, you need to like, 
if you roll into an interview and like facilitate a wonderful problem-solving conversation that involves a bunch of people, you might get a job before they even know what languages you know. You know, like that's such a massive thing. But unfortunately, we're not going to have too much time to talk about that. Actually, we're on our way to. I was thinking about what you, all these job skills that you need to know, and I was thinking about we're going to Nashville, like the mecca of like. Uh, acoustic guitars and stuff, and I was like, oh, this reminded me of this great uh, 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 Doc Watson song. The guy gets the job, you know? He rolls in, he's like, the boss is like, what do you need to do? He's like, I can lay railroad track, you're hired, you know? It's amazing. I wish you could go into a job interview now and be like, what can you do? And be like, I can align squiggly braces. <laughs> you're hired! <laughs> That'd be great. It's not as easy anymore. You've got to know all kinds of stupid stuff. Because there's this whole set of, of course, core skills that you need to know of all the languages. Because you sit down as a front-end developer, you need to know a bunch of languages to do your job all day. You know, read, write, maintain them. And then a bunch of bonus skills, too, which is make, what makes this interesting, which is probably going to be mostly what we talk about here. Let's talk about these core skills for a minute. This will surprise nobody. They are HTML and CSS, I would think. Yeah? You know, like, the reason that that's not controversial is because every single website in the whole world is built from them. Like at some, there's all kinds of other stuff that happens, but in the end, it's HTML and CSS. A hundred percent of websites have HTML of some kind. That's definitely gonna. There's some things coming down from the wire that gets turned into the DOM that makes that website. Probably 99.9-ish percent of websites have CSS in some way. I'm sure there's a couple outliers still using font tags or whatever, but. Those are fundamental skills that, that will serve you well. It's not like, oh, we're, yeah, they're there, but we only write in abstract languages. No, like that still is plenty of the work that we do as front-end developers, too. Like the six-year-old tweet from Dan Cederholm saying that, uh, that it's really through his 15 years, which would now be 21 years, I guess, is that, that HTML is still a good bet, you know? And it, I'd say that's true. And this, even for CSS2, there's really nothing that's like angling to unseat those things. There's always ways that we're compiling it differently and thinking about it differently, but as a fundamental technology, it's as important now as it really ever has been, which is cool. And then there's a third language, though, isn't there? I'm pretty sure there's a third language. <laughs> Let's see what Eric has to say about it. You know, and it might be somebody who knows a ton of JavaScript and can handwrite it all, or it might be somebody who only uses libraries like jQuery, or it might be somebody who never writes JavaScript at all. Um, and Yeah, uh, it doesn't make you not a front-end developer. Right. I mean, I think you need to at least understand JavaScript and its role, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be able to write everything from scratch. So yes, it's definitely the third language. It's you know what you what your your skill level at it is is can be widely different, but you definitely need to understand its role, kind of thing. Definitely the third language of the well for sure. And then there's all these. Oh, and notice I put accessibility next to all three of these languages. It definitely touches on all three of these languages. Here's here's Peggy about that. Great. I do think though, like as a front end developer, like you should have basic fluency and accessibility regardless. Like if you're building UI, you should know some basic principles of accessibility and not just leave that to a specialist. I'll let that stand for itself, I think. Uh, and then there's these plus skills or bonus skills, whatever. I found this fascinating. I got this from uh, my wife, Miranda, who worked on like digital uh, uh, teams at media companies for a super long time and in fact was, was part of the led up the team at the Boston Globe when they made that first um, responsive design years ago that kind of proved that it that it works at a large scale for the industry. And it, when she was hiring, there'd be people that would come in and they kind of like just knew HTML and CSS. And even back then, it was kind of like almost not enough. And I hate to say that because that's not exactly what I mean. But she would always look for people that were like, sure, that's like the get in the door core skills. But it was they tended to hire people that were HTML and CSS plus. That they were like, if JavaScript is your plus, that's great. That's a full rounded thing. But it could be plus you're a great designer too, or you're a great copywriter or you're an illustrator or you dig into accessibility or you have some other skill set that augments those, those kind of core skills. And I found that kind of fascinating. And it leads to this like life as a front-end developer, really any career, but we're, that's what we're talking about here is a little bit like a choose your own adventure book. Like you're fighting a supercomputer in a hallway. What do you do? Stab it in the keyboard with a fork? Turn to page 94, you know? Or do you run away like a wimp, turn to page 12, you know? And then everybody's life is this different fork and path, and everybody ends somewhere differently, but we're all reading the same story. 
it, metaphorically, our, the, our jobs is like this in a way, and that you, there's this fundamental tree of what we all know, but we all end up with wildly different skill sets. I don't know if it's the perfect metaphor, but that's the one we're going to use. Uh, and it's leading to this point, like, is front-end development going through somewhat of an identity crisis? That's, this is the, the kind of fascinating premise that we're going to be working with here. We can pinpoint a moment, I think, when that started to happen. This thing happened, uh, for sure. Number one language on uh, uh, Stack Overflow. It's the most code on GitHub. It's this massive chart of package managers that took off. Uh, NPM being that red line there that uh, has really blown all the rest of them out of the water. There's a moment right there, right? It's really NPM is really taking off at the end of the 2015, which is this kind of seminal moment, which many of you will recognize. I'm going to give you one homework assignment in closing, which I've never done in the state of Word before. And you might be able to predict it. <laughs> and it's to learn JavaScript deeply. <laughs> sure you all familiar with that. He look, it turns out that red line happened. You know, he's kind of right about that. And then, of course, it's huge in the client. But like, it's really, you can be a developer these days and know no other language. <laughs> that's, that's possible. Um, cool. So, and so this has been happening. I've been reading blog posts and comments on blog posts and, and, and finding the sentiment of this is absolutely all over the place. Here's Stephen Davis saying just like, let's just not use the word anymore. Let's split. Let's be UX engineers and JavaScript engineers. There are different mindsets. People tend to not be good at both. It's just where this world is heading a little bit. And, and Stephen being like, I'm happy to just not be on the JavaScript side of that. I'm good at the HTML and CSS kind of thing. And I'm sick of like being forced to ask to, to do more than that in a way. That's just one sentiment. But there's a lot of that happening. So maybe if our metaphor is this, which is already a wide array of skill sets that have led us there, it's starting to feel a little bit more like this. We're all front-end developers, but there's these, this, this path that you can take right at the beginning that leads you down this deep JavaScript land and this other path that kind of doesn't, and you still end up all over the place, but there seems to be a split kind of in the middle. Maybe that's not fair, but still, we're going to roll with it for a minute. Vernon Joyce has the first article I read that called it an identity crisis. Who blames the frameworks? Saying that these frameworks are huge already, not only in what they do from us, but how many websites they're already powering. It's just this massive, like, everybody's doing this kind of thing, Angular, React, Vue, Ember, all of them, uh, and that the people that go down that road, the <laughs> write Medium articles about MVC and functional programming and the context API and React Suspense and all these like very fancy things that some of us are front-end developers for a long time read and you're just like, <laughs> what's that about? Yeah, and you're like, this got weird real quick. It feels like a, a like an alternate universe sometimes, where you're standing there right next to another front-end developer, and you share no, no skill set at all together. You're like, but we're both, are we both, we're both the thing? That's weird. Uh, Brad stumbled upon a way to describe this in one of our shows. I don't want to sort of configure Webpack or like gulp like workflows and stuff like that. And so I, I found that I'm sort of on the more design, you know, the front of the front end and then sort of having somebody else that's more on like the back of the front end uh, as, a, as a nice sort of uh, uh, complementary role. But he called it a complementary role, which is kind of cool. Like, what if there's these two people that went down these different paths? Together, they could be great. Yeah, absolutely. People, after hearing that, wrote comments in like, I've been feeling that divide for years now. And somebody said, just yesterday, I was looking at a code base and thinking, ooh, this was clearly written by a JavaScript developer, uh, which is a poke, for sure. You know, there's a lot of poking across the divide. Uh, Plenty of that kind of thing happening. Uh, but there's more than poking happening, too. There's lots of like extreme frustration that's happening, too. And there's nothing more personal and frustrating than trying to get a job and not getting one because of this divide hurting you in some way. Here's Michael from uh, Just Markup saying that I'm seeing this industry wide. I'm seeing companies hire JavaScript developers replacing backend developers. And sometimes when that happens, if you go down that deep JavaScript route that you don't, that maybe your skill level at just the HTML, CSS thing is kind of bad. You don't write it very often. You don't care about it that much. 
In the same kind of way that I, as a longtime front-end developer, am very helpless at a lot of back-end tasks. I can't do much with a database. I can't configure servers particularly well. I'm hopeless at that. Thankfully, nobody asks me to do that that often, but all of a sudden, we're asking JavaScript developers to be great at some front-end tasks, too. It's a, weird, it's a weird crossover. This happened a couple of years ago to Lara, who wrote up this um, uh, story on CSS Tricks about, you know, saw job posting. The job posting met some 80% of what she thought she could do for that company, went in. The interview was mostly great, but then asked her some, like, JavaScript algorithm-style questions that, that didn't go particularly well and didn't get the job and was kind of like WTF, you know? Like, why did you ask me in here? Like, I have this deep skill set. Laura's a great developer who has a wide skill set of front end JavaScript stuff, but also uh, WordPress development and all this, and then, and then didn't get it for some, from some dumb little thing. It's just kind of like, that can be extremely frustrating. It can be like, Hiring wise, we've got to be more clear about that. So here's the situation. Now hiring a front end developer is a job post. Hey, I'm a front end developer. Here's Sue. Sue uh, is looking for a job, but at her last job was a React developer and worked on server side rendering because they used Next.js a whole bunch. And the data layer was Apollo GraphQL, which is awesome, and worked on this big app. And it made sense to use a CSS and JavaScript style architecture to get that because it worked on our team really well and just lived in that React and Babel and Webpack and Friends universe. And it would be like, what are you good at? She'd be like, I am good at JavaScript architecture and I'm really, I really care about performance. She's a front end developer. She's a great front end developer. And she, <clears throat> would fit on lots of great teams. Should she apply for that job? Hell yeah, she could, but here's Joe. Joe is also like, he worked at an agency for the last couple of years, built lots of sites, lots of WordPress themes, would sprinkle on jQuery stuff when they needed to, because that's kind of all they needed. He was kind of like the CSS architecture guy, did a lot of SaaS stuff. He loves working with SVG and interaction design. If you say, Joe, what are you into? I'm like, I care about the users. I care about accessibility. I love building websites. Joe's a fantastic developer too. Is he a front-end developer? Yes. Should he apply for that job? Sure, but wow, are those two people different. It's not like there's no crossover. It's not like those people can't learn those other skills. Certainly they can, but sometimes when you're hiring a job, it's about what you know right now, and those are very different skill sets that are, you're gonna, one of these two pe people are is probably gonna be wasting somebody's time, which sucks, you know? It feels like that. Anyway, here's Peggy about that divide. Yeah, I think like front-end developer is such a broad term um, it's hard to really define like what exactly a front end developer is because there's so many different specialties, right? Like you can be uh, a specialty, a specialist in SVG animations and be a front end developer and not write any JavaScript at all. Or you could be more working on the data layer uh, like I am and not writing any uh, CSS, for example, and still be considered a front end developer. So I think it's kind of, you know, as long as you're uh, touching UI or, or touching something like a data layer that's tangentially related to UI, I think, um, you know, you can identify as a front end developer. It's a wide, it's a wide place to be. I even think about it in WordPress context, like all of a sudden we have Gutenberg now. Great. How do you build a Gutenberg block? It's weird. It's like React and Webpack and Babel and friends. You gotta have that skill set. And you gotta like no WordPress APIs and probably some PHP and stuff. So there's some of that stuff going on. And then it outputs like a thing that goes in your theme. So you need some like HTML and CSS knowledge. Who is that? That's like a new person or a combination of roles is probably going to be more done by teams and companies and stuff than it is by like an individual. Like, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's lots of great, super intelligent people here that can absolutely build a block, but I'm kind of like not one of them, you know, like a, not, I, I, I want to do it. I'm interested, but I'm going to be collaborating with people. I have a lot to learn because the skill set for that is weird. It's weird to me. Mel Choice has a wonderful blog article about how she put together a block for this conference, for the speaker block thing. And like, look at how it is. You know, you got to pick a block. It's got a special icon. It's got, I don't know, you have to know about what classes and stuff to use in there. I guess some of that is boilerplated out. But then it outputs something that's definitely going to go on the front end. So there's CSS class names involved, but they're controlled by controls on the right. So you need to know how to build that too. There's probably some APIs and stuff for that you got to learn. And it's like, this is a pretty Pretty wide skill set here. Pretty, it's kind of fascinating. And then there's this, like, how do you build that dropdown? Well, I don't know. This is a React component, so you're gonna have to npm install some kind of npm-y React-y dropdown-y thing, you know. <laughs>
And then where does it get that data from that? I don't know, I guess the, the REST API, querying a custom post type thing, who's, who's super proficient in that? The same exact person that knows all that React stuff? Or is, it, is that a different developer? I don't know, it's just complicated. And what about all these people that are like, oh, I like WordPress fine, but I like building, I want to build my site in Gatsby, or, or I want to like build it, I don't want to be told how to build my front end. There's a lot of this happening in front end development. I want to build the front end how I want to build my front end. It's not that I don't like WordPress, I'm just going to consume it with API. APIs and the REST API now exists and you can absolutely do that and GraphQL is getting bigger and there's a way to do that too. Don't tell me how to build my front end, I'll build my front end. That's a new kind of developer that lives in a kind of different world. That I love that, I think that's cool that that's, that's possible. I don't know if this is exactly a problem. There is a divide, a schism happening here, So, but like, let's just acknowledge it and think about it and talk about it. That's kind of important. Hiring people. Use your words for sure. Don't just say, we're hiring a front-end developer and just let whoever apply to that. You should probably talk about it. This is, you know, use the first few paragraphs of your job posting to be like, this is what we need right now. This is what we sh you should know. This is, you know, that way it's just, there's not a guess. If you're not that person, maybe you can uh, look for another possible role or, or say that I want to learn those things or whatever. <laughs> There's a recent article from Hayden Pickering saying that there's there's a lot of like places that are they have these like full stack gatekeepers that are like I'm this amazing programmer and JavaScript can do everything now so it does do everything now, and they and they and they are they're in control of the HTML and CSS too because it's like the easy part or whatever, but it's not their competency you know and it's that's causing some some anger and and, and problems that way too, it leads to like the greatest tweet ever you know, <laughs> we only have full stack developers here. <laughs> That's all we hire. Brad saying like, and it tends to be that one way around. It's not like it's not it's not like the a lot of full stack people are mostly proficient in great HTML and CSS, and then and also proficient in JavaScript. It always tends to be the other way around that the, uh, the HTML and CSS stuff gets a. Uh, gets handled poorly, and but it's not always that way. I don't mean to poke too far that, that direction, but the, the point is here is like, it doesn't matter. Like whatever it is that you do in the world, it doesn't give you permission to suck at something else. You know, like if you suck at that thing, then somebody else needs to step up there and not suck at it. You know, like that's what teams are for. Businesses are cool like that. You, you hire the thing, you know, especially these things, you know, like don't, just because you have one skill set doesn't give you permission to like do poorly at any of those particular things, you know. So that's kind of cool. You know, and maybe it does need a rethinking. Maybe we should stop saying front-end developer so much and start saying other things. That's never going to hold. The reason I don't like advocate for particular job titles is because that war has been waged forever and like it just doesn't work. You just a job title needs to be a paragraph, I think, these days, pretty much. Uh, anyway, so let's end this with some like some like front end developer candy. I think you know, like if you're into like thinking about websites and how other people think about websites, let's just do that rather than talk about the divide so much. And maybe there's a divide because people think so differently at websites. I had all these developers look at the same designs and then tell me what goes through their mind when they think of that design. Here's a design. How would a front end developer approach that? This Here's is like the, the the definition of sort of like component driven. UI, I feel like this is like, I, I would have a blast with this, just sort of going through and chopping this this whole thing up. Brad thinks about components, atomic design. Uh, the no first surprise. thing I see is lots of media objects. Um, and of course, media objects, for those who may not know, it's just, it's an, uh, an image or a piece of media with some content right to the side of it. And I feel like most of this uh, design can be accomplished with by creating a media object and the only thing that kind of changes is how big that piece of media or content is. She's so thinking about CSS patterns that can be used heavily throughout this thing to be efficient with the CSS. Instead of seeing the green characters in the matrix, I see HTML structures. That's literally where I start. And so you immediately start outlining like H1, H2, H or probably at this stage is more heading, heading, heading. That's a list. That's an ordered list because of the nature of it. Um, you know, over there is a is maybe an unordered list. You know, this is a, and especially for the design. This particular design is a lot of lists. List. Eric sees lists all over this thing. He's probably right about that. <laughs> Dang near the whole thing. I see a lot of typography, and I'm already thinking about the type system. 
Sam went on to say that that's a, like a like a uh, at the moment kind of a weak point for her, and so she wants to start with the type system on purpose because he wants to get that set, uh, you know, and then move on to her her things that she's better. To me, at. I think this is kind of fun, like uh, especially when you have to if you have to consider a variety of screen sizes, like the menu on the left. Um, you know, there's like the the Windows deal where like I've seen like where the menu kind of half collapses and maybe it goes to just icons, which may or may not be helpful in this context, but like you know how can we sort of have like, almost like what's the tablet with going to do yeah Trent was always talking about that like responsive design is fine it's easy to think about the extremes of what designs are going to do but he was very into the the really subtle in-betweens of what responsive design nobody said the same things and that's just a tiny portion of what they said so if you're into this kind of thing our series on chop talk show is all about uh this type of thing there's a bunch of them here how's how's this weird design you know like a really bold vector based I, I kind would, of design i would love to tackle how to create these different animations yeah everybody looked at those animations being like Ooh, how are we gonna do that that there's looks a fun. lot like a lot of noise like kind of like a speckled textures all over the site there's like an illustration up top with like uh, some, some cookware and some food and some coffee. Uh, you know, you wonder if you could maybe, instead of you know exporting this, there's like a gigantic diagonal beige texture, or maybe it's like a table or something. Um, can you take that texture and repeat it elsewhere and maybe color it so you're not having to export gigantic oh, yeah. image files? He was immediately starting to be clever and be like, how can we texturize everything with a lightweight file? Might not thing? surprise you that I sort of tend to think of components. And stuff. Mm. So immediate, immediately sort of the things that sort of stick out in my mind is, you know, what are these sort of repeatable elements, even in this sort of seemingly very bespoke uh, layout? He's like, there's no website too small for thinking in that way, in a way, which is, which is fascinating. Uh, asking for a lot of SVG resources. Of course, vector all day. And but Eric was saying, like, this is a team already. I can't do this myself because I need, I need like, people to be, be carving up these assets to, like, to me. I can't enjoy a website without, like, thinking of its skeleton. <laughs> I heard a lot of that. Like, that's all I see is this behind the matrix stuff. I think this one is interesting because it's a website that I might argue WordPress isn't particularly well suited to do, or is it all, now all of a sudden? Like, like this is, you know, there's all these like interesting weird blocks in the middle of it that are like, how would you do that with just, just one content area? Maybe that's starting to make more sense to chop up into uh, kind of custom Gutenberg-y blocks, you know, that there's that three column thing, not particularly well suited, um, you know, with just one text area kind of thing. You're adding markup or short codes or that kind of thing. All these things are probably going to be served a bit better in Gutenberg land. I hope, maybe. We'll see how that pans out. It's been a day, so. <laughs> uh, this is weird. Like, this is more like a print poster like almost. Like that G? Right? Oh, my gosh. Like, I could stare at that G for hours. Really <laughs> she was, like, admiring other people's typography, just staring at a G for hours. Can you imagine? The first thing I'm thinking of is, oh, cool, writing modes. I can use the writing mode to turn, because there's this, there's a couple of headlines that are written vertically. So the first thing I'm seeing there is opportunity to use that. She's, th again, thinking about interesting CSS approaches to, to handle this thing. Like, how do you get that vertical text? What, what can Actually, I do this, this seems to be like, a, like, it would restack or reflow or reshape itself, but keep the, the like, aesthetic intact at all views. It seems like it could be really fun. Uh Trent, again, thinking about how weird you can get with the responsive design of it. You know, like, that's fine for landscape, but what about portrait or huge sizes it's got rating mode it's got grid it's got uh fonts right it's got custom fonts eric was really excited about this one he's like i'm gonna reach out to this guy i'm gonna see if <laughs> if i can put this out like a zen garden thing like how would different developers approach it and he <laughs> i was like i wonder if he did that but it's kind of a there's a lot going on here that's fun you know people saw the dots and had different approaches to it somebody said i would approach those dots with um an unordered list with just empty li's in it just floated next to each other i'm like oh my god please don't do that that's a <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, like a landing page kind of thing. This looks like everybody's website. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing you see is the... Yeah, yeah. it's got it's... thin text at the top and then a round button and design at the bottom. <laughs> She's like, oh. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's a landing page, right? 
perhaps speak to them and you know if, if this is something that's going to be used um, in poorer parts of the world like whether they they want backups for when SVG isn't available so whether you just have a standard um, background in JPEG or PNG something like that um, yeah, and how they see the interactions working where if I could get started is it a separate page or is that thing Ajax then already and the page is going to transition across um, so I'd be sort of asking questions about how do you, how should this thing feel? Yeah, right. He's thinking. If anyone was always thinking about how does it fall back and what does it happens cross browser and with low data and and then like what's deeper than this? Like what happens after you see this page? You know. Um, and I was thinking this one too is one of those type of pages that's like I think we're gonna start thinking that way. If we're all deep in WordPress land, you're gonna be like block 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 block. Um, this is a weird interactive one. If you like roll over this, it launches some some crazy stuff and animations. And I always worry when I see a lot of big high resolution images that this is going to crawl on a um, anything less than a really really good um, connection. Yeah, just thinking about like is that. <laughs> Like, who, who, who's that going to work really well for it? Who's it yeah, not? Yeah, it stresses me out that when I click on a link, I don't expect that to happen, I think. That's my... Yeah, you have some, like, UX concerns. Like, this is a bit much. Yeah, a bit much. But I like when they come back together in silence. So maybe we can focus on that. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean to have people like not like, mostly people are like this is amazing but you know there are people who have concerns I'm seeing too. kind of like data that looks pretty static so maybe I would use something like uh, Gatsby in order to build out this site yeah she Peggy talked a lot about about things like that a lot of GraphQL stuff but also like like the tool tooling around it and using tools like Gatsby and Gatsby apparently has some cool image manipulation stuff that can help with the performance of these images um, there's a weird dashboard kind of thing we'll look Whether at. Whether things like there's little dots, sort of marker points on that graph, and I want to know, um, is there a touch target on there? And if so, what's the minimum size for that? Yeah, thinking about the accessibility of touch. You know, this looks kind of like a tablet design. Are you going to, is that something you can it screw up? It also looks like there's some sort of like real-time component to this as well because it's kind of like Uber where you like see the preview of the car driving to the destination. Yeah, real time, maybe, what kind of APIs are involved? How do you build that map? But I'll probably have to learn SVGs. I've been learning SVGs. Hanging out with Sarah Dresner is a problem in your life. You learn about SVGs. Yeah, you know, I don't really know how to do the map part. Everything else sounds fine. <laughs> uh, that's funny, because that looks like a Google map. Monica's at Google. Uh, there's a, a Trello, Trello-ish looking weird board here. And then I'd be asking questions about, I suppose, what's the the support matrix for this, or who you're looking in terms of browser support. So could we be looking at something to be built with CSS Grid? Does it need to be um, something a bit older? Yeah, support. Like, we all know about the new fancy things. What well, about you're going to have things? to drag and drop, and that is the biggest nightmare in the universe. So good luck, have fun. <laughs> goes all very positive about building. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. Uh, anyway, we can wrap up with the idea that I think and talk about this stuff a lot. I'm fascinated by what is a front-end developer and how is it changing and what is this whole world like. On CS Strix, I write articles like what makes a good one and how to be a senior one and the all-powerful front-end developer. That one's particularly relevant because it talks about how front-end design, it's not only just changing a little bit but widening a whole ton. We talked about how uh, front-end developers are in some cases replacing some back-end developers and, and there's, we're so powerful these days. There's a lot of things that front-end developers can, you can build a site A to Z uh, a lot of times even with fancy data stuff. It's a big conversation. This, this divide is kind of happening and I encourage people to just talk about it. I think it's it's worth talking about, especially when it causes frustration at companies because there's there's problems here with pay gaps and there's problems here with finding the right people and stuff. And it's just it's just worth having as a conversation. I think. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for listening to my talk. I think we just about get it. I said I maybe wasn't going to do questions. We do have like five ten minutes. So if the people have some good questions, I'm, I'd be happy to take one. I think a microphone is required though for the stream. So. Hey. Can you hear me? I can. OK. 
Okay, um, my name's Amber, I follow you on Twitter. Yeah. Big fan. Um, so I've been a freelance developer for like, I don't know, forever. And my biggest problem is that people think I only do like WordPress. They don't realize I also oh. do like craft and I do, you know, static websites. Um, I can do PH, a little bit of PHP and some JavaScript and stuff, even yeah. though everywhere on my website it says I'm a front end developer. Yeah. So my biggest problem with like changing to like a UX engineer, mm. because I don't do React or Vue or anything like that, is that will clients know what that means? And like my clients are like agencies, like yeah. design agencies. So how do people find you? Like can you just tell them what you do? You know, like, I mean, I, I, mean, it's, I, I think it'd be hard to have like, I'm an, and then have like a strip of logos. These are the CMSs I support. <laughs> you know, like that might be a bit much, you know? But, well, I mean, like on my homepage, I have a list of, I do accessibility, semantics, yeah, But you know, it's not working? Like um, I don't know. I mean, right now, everywhere says front-end developer because that's what everyone understands. So, like, if I switch to UX engineer, are they going to think that I do design work? Because I don't do any design work. Oh, and funny, yeah. It might be a use-your-word situation, although you, you already are. So, I don't know what to tell you. Like, if there's, if it sounds like you're a rock in a hard place kind of thing. You're getting the wrong client. But I mean, these can be solved with conversations, right? Once you're on the phone, hopefully you can really clarify yourself. It sounds like the problem is in the first contact, they're not understanding what you do exactly. But hopefully, like, a five-minute call can clear those things up, maybe, hopefully. So, good luck with that. But that okay. means I have to get on the phone. Oh, rough. <laughs> No, Thank I hate you. Those things. <laughs> Maybe one more. Hey, Maybe. Chris. Um, thank you for all you do with no. CSS tricks. I use Flexbox um, on CSS tricks all the time. Um, so my question is, like, with all the different paths you can go down, how do you pick? Like, what's the best way for someone to pick? Oh, I need to learn more about SVG. I need to learn more about React. Mm -hmm. How would you suggest going yeah. about that? I mean, we've always had like the on Shop Talk show, our, even our intro theme song ends with this like, we're, we're as at a conference, we have this slogan where we ask people to go, and they, it's a three word slogan just build websites. So it's almost worth doing here. But we had the whole crowd go, just build websites. And it's awesome. It's part of the theme song now. But that's really kind of the advice. And I know that it's kind of a cop up, but the idea is, well, how do I pick what to learn next? have the project find you or whatever it is you're working on, have that guide what you need to learn next. I find it's very rare for me to just be like, I think I'm going to dabble with Angular this weekend. I don't do that ever. <laughs> That's never going to happen. I might do that if I had a client who needed it, even though I don't do client work, or my team decided that we're going to use that technology for that kind of thing, or I saw some demo of an SVG thing that I think I could put into our product somewhere that'd be cool, so I'm going to learn it because I have an end goal in mind. I think that's the way to do it. It is tricky, though, but if you really are just twiddling your thumbs, like, what technology should I learn? Let's say React. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, one, this isn't a question, it's a comment, actually. Oh, great. <laughs> so I, I, I got into devel development uh, through linguistics. Uh, was working on a PhD in linguistics a while back yep. when life sort of led me down a different path. But the point uh, that I would say is like when you say uh, compound noun, love it, right? That's great. However, it sounds like a grammar Nazi thing. Yeah, right. Where, uh, you know, is it hyphenated, not hyphenated? Um, when you work on Native American languages, like when you're putting lots of meanings into one thing and you want to like say, well, this means this, this means that. It's really not the case. It's how you use it. So yeah. really, the, the question or the answer to the first person is like, how are you going to use it? And each time we use it, it's going to take on a little shade of its yeah, own sure. meaning. Like language evolves kind of thing. And I say unhyphenated all around. <laughs> Definitely. Forget hyphen. I'm pro hyphen because of CSS dash tricks. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs>